we did an adjusting entry last time related to the uh, interest, accrued interest. We could see it down here reflected in our payable of interest payable, this being interest that has been consumed, kind of like if you were to consume the rental of a office building, but you hadn't yet paid the rent, we have to incur, we have to on an accrual basis show, hey, you owe that money because you consumed the office building space. And you have to show the interest payable here because you consumed the use of the money that you use to finance the equipment that you're using to generate revenue in the future. And then on the right hand side, the other side of the report, it was included in the interest expense. So that's great because our financial statements are properly reported now as close as possible to uh, proper accrual recording as of the cutoff date in our case, February 28, which notice you might think of it more on a year end cutoff date oftentimes, but we're doing the end of February. You could do it a month by month cutoff date, depends on what you're doing, but that's our cutoff date. So the financial statements were correct so we could do our reporting as of that point in time but it kind of messes up the bookkeeper now because they were going to record an interest like on the second month paint when they make the payment here they were just going to record it according to the amortization schedule and now we've got this weird thing happening so let's pull this down here and just show you what i mean by this right because now they're going to be like okay i'm going to record the interest but now I've got this interest payable here what do I have to do with that so you would think at the next time of payment if I don't reverse that that I'd have to take that into account because normally what I was just going to do the bookkeeper might say or the accountant might say when they're when they're entering I usually I would say cash would have to go down and this would be my journal entry I would say I'm going to put in debit to credit it would be a, a credit in which I'm going to make a negative number and what's what I normally do and then interest expense would have to be debited according to my schedule here of the 145.83 and then the loan payable account would go down by by this and that would put me in balance these two adding up to that so in other words I was planning if I'm the bookkeeper, I'm talking about from the accounting department side of things. I was planning on entering like a check form or an expense form. I'm not actually going to record this. I'm just saying that that when I paid this off, one of these accounts was going to go to interest expense, interest expense, according to my amortization schedule of 145.83, 145.83. And the other was going to go into that loan payable account loan payable but for like the business loan which i think was the b of a one that we're on and that was going to be for the 161898 1618 point what did i say 0 0.99 0.99 and that's the that's the transaction I was I was thinking to do here so that it would have the total of the 176482 lowering the cash account and then and then like interest expense would be this one 145 and then the loan payable would be going down and that then, then I would match out this 3381 right that's what would happen but I can't do that because if I take into consideration you've got this loan payable on the books, you would think now I'd have to do something like cash would still go down by this amount, but then you'd, you've got this this uh, interest payable, interest payable, which is a liability payable on the books at 72.92. So I'd have to take that off the books, which is a debit because it's a liability account. I won't and then the interest expense then would have to be for this 145 145.83 minus that i think right and then the loan the loan payable would still have to be this something like that so this still ties out right and so i so if i was to properly record the next transaction i'd have to decrease the loan payable breaking out the the decrease of the loan payable if i go back on over to here 
and said, do you want to leave? I'm going to say without saving, I do. I do. I'd have to, I'd have to make that go back down to zero, which isn't hitting the income statement in the current period, which would be March in this case. And then, and then I'd have to record the side, the interest expense in March. This is complex. I don't want to have, I don't want the accountant to have to, to have to deal with that. Uh, we could, we could tell them to just keep doing this or possibly just if they're on a cash based system, just record everything to the cash amount to the loan payable account. And we'll just do periodic adjustments and we'll just fix it at the end of, of each period or something like that. Uh, but we're going to say, Hey, look, we're going to reverse it 